السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Hello everyone and welcome to your English class In our lesson today we'll finish with our first unit which is titled Complaints Complaints Our lesson today is the project and self-reflection in your books page 18 and 19 All you need for the lesson today is your books page 18 and 19 a sheet of paper and a pen to take down your notes So let's get started by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to design a poster about a faulty item. Also, you will be able to fill in a self-reflection form. One for the project and the other one is for the self-reflection. Let's start with this. Speaking about a faulty item, we're having certain questions, questions to speak about a faulty item, a damaged item. It could be something that you bought online or you bought you, when you brought it home or it delivered home, you, find it, you found out that it is faulty, could be broken, or it could be the wrong size. So, questions that you can answer like, what is it? It could be a dress, shoes, or we can say glass, eyeglasses or sunglasses. What is wrong or what was wrong with this item? You will speak and tell what, what was exactly wrong with it. Let's say the shirt. It, has a, it had a missing button. Or we can say that the shoes were the wrong size. The eyeglasses were broken. Then, speaking about what did you do towards the faulty item? Did you keep it? Or you can say, I communicated with the customer service and asked them for exchange or refund. Then, what happened? How did they respond to you? Did they give you your money back or they will give you an exchange or did they refused to do it? Okay, for the project in your books page 18, think about the complaints that your family has made about different products at home. What are the products and what was wrong with these products? Speaking maybe about a dripping faucet, a faucet that drips, tap. Also, we're having a broken wind pane Maybe the window pane is broken. Also, we can speak about, it, about the car. It had a flat tire. Or the car as well, the cracked windshield. And we can speak about the clothing. These pants are stained. It has a stain. Or we can speak about the air conditioner. We can say that it doesn't get cold. The air con conditioner doesn't work. It doesn't get cold. So you will choose one of these products to be based on it. You will here. You will interview some of your of the members of your family and fa find out more. Maybe your father, your one of your siblings. You will ask them about what what was wrong with the item that they bought or they got. You can ask them question like, "What is it? What is the name of the item?" A question like, "What was wrong with the item? Broken, torn." What did you do towards it and what happened? Just like the questions that we've answered at the beginning of this lesson. So I came up with this one. You will make notes in the chart in your books page 18. You will speak who, uh, who was the person, one of your family, it could be a friend. Then what, what, what is the name of the product? Is it a computer, car or what is it? The complaint, what was wrong with the product? Was it broken? Was it torn? Then your advice. So I've came up with here, my dad had a problem with his car. So the person is dad and the product is the car. What could go wrong with a car? A car, the windshield is cracked. The windshield is cracked, not broken this time. And we can say the battery is dead. It doesn't work. What advice can you give your dad or your father about these things? Maybe we can say the windshield should be fixed. You should take it to the garage and they will fix it. It should be fixed. And also, the battery must be replaced. They will get you a new one. Another problem is related to computer. So, it happened to my sister or we can say to Nora. So, the complaint, what was wrong with her computer? 
we will say that the computer crashed. It crashed. It doesn't work. And my advice will be the computer should be checked. You should take it to the technician and they will check it. Maybe they will, uh, they will check it for viruses or any softwares. Okay? You can find out, uh, you can interview one or more than one within this chart. For the self-reflection part in your book's page 19, what do we mean when we say a self-reflection? When you self-reflect, you are actually, it's a way of assessing yourself, your ways of working, and how you study. So when you reflect, you're thinking about your learning and your improvement. It is your time now to ask yourself, how am I doing in this unit? Am I doing well, or I need to practice more? You're now giving yourself marks. It is your time, not to the teacher's time, to tell how good or how much work do you need to make. Okay, so before we start with the self-reflection, let's ask ourselves and we will flip through the first unit and we will ask, what have we taken so far in this unit? From the beginning, we've started with faulty items. Even in the, in the discussion lessons, what could go wrong with the items? Need to be done. Something need to be done to the computer. Something need to be done to the car. Then, have or get something done. I can't make the car or fix the car myself, so I will take it to the garage. Then I will say, my car had been fixed. Also, we have, we have spoken about using the past participle form of the verb as an adjective, broken windshield. I can say cracked. So we will use the past participle as an adjective. Types of verbs. We've spoken about the base form. Verb number three, which is the past part participle as the, uh, the adjective. The infinitives, as well as the gerunds. As well as we've, st we, we've read about Morphe's law and how to write a complaint letter. How to complain about something with while you are writing. Let's take them one by one. What do you think? Which, which one of these you find it very interesting? You like it. It's not very easy or difficult. Something you like the most. It was very interesting when we have read about Morphe's Law. What about something you find? Yes, it is okay. It's not difficult. However, it's not my cup of tea. I didn't like it. You can choose anyone. This is personal preference. How about something that was easy? That was very simple for me. It was a piece of cake. Maybe the pronunciation or the listening part. How about something that was a bit challenging? I need to practice it more. So you can choose anyone and based on you, you can tell. Let's take them one by one. On page eight, we've talked about problems and things that need to be done. You will ask yourself, how am I doing with this objective? Am I doing well? So you will highlight the first one, or I need to practice more, or I need to redo it again. So in here, what's wrong with this one? We can say a leaky pipe. It's a pipe and it leaks, not the, drippy, the dripping faucet. Then we're having here a car. What's wrong with the tire? The tire is flat, flat tire. Also, we're having here these pants, we're having steel pants. And we can ch check this TV and what was wrong with it. We're having TV lines on the screen. So when there are lines, you can see or you can use it. Okay, let's talk about problems and things need to be done on page eight as well. What's wrong with the computer? Look at the, the computer screen. The computer crashed. The computer needs to be repaired. I need to call when someone to help me with the computer. Needs to be checked. Also, let's, let's look at this one. This one is a carpet and it has a stain. So I will say, the carpet has a stain. It is a stained carpet. The carpet is stained. What needs to be done? The carpet needs to be cleaned. One more, what's wrong with the tire in here? The tire is flat. The car has a flat tire. 
what do we need to do with it? The tire needs to be replaced or fixed. So need to be done. Something, there is a problem, it's flat. I had to do something towards it, need to be done. Now in here, you will, how, how do you do with using need to be done and have or get something done? We're having the problem is need to be done and the solution after fixing it, asking someone to help you with it, you will say, I had or I got something done for me. Here we're having a computer, the computer crashed. So I will say, the problem is the computer needs to be fixed. It crashed, so it needs to be fixed. I need to call someone to fix it for me. I called the technician, and he came in and fixed my computer. So I can say, I have or he had or got the computer fixed. Did he do it himself? No. Someone had done it for him. How about the room in here? What's wrong with the room? The room in here is a mess. What do we need to do to, to the room? The room and clean. So we will say, the room needs to be cleaned. I need to ask someone to clean the room for me. Then I called someone and they, they cleaned it for me. I will say, the, uh, she had or she got the room cleaned. She didn't do it herself. Someone else had done it for her. Then speaking about the use of the past participle as an adjective like here the dvd is scratched let's notice scratched scratch in here speaking grammatically it is the past participle form of the verb however what does it do in this sentence it actually describes the noun which, com which comes before so it, it works as if it were an adjective so the past participle can work as an adjective it functions as an adjective and it describes a noun. So we can say that the, the DVD is scratched. Here, what is wrong with this car? The windshield is cracked. Notice cracked is the past participle. However, it functions here as, a, uh, as an adjective. What's wrong with the doorknob in here? The handle, the doorknob is broken. Broken is the past participle form of the verb, and it functions as an adjective. What's wrong with the DVD? The DVD is scratched. And here the carpet, the carpet is stained. So all these words, we're having cracked, broken, scratched, and stained. They are all past participle, however, the function as if it were an adjective. Okay. Then on page 16, we've spoken about already, yet, and just. We use them as time expressions to express the perfect tense, the present perfect tense. I have already, like, I have already turned the oven off. I have done it before, a minute ago. And I can say, have you already turned the oven off? I can use it in a question as well. How about just? Just, just as we said, I have just baked a pie. I have just done a that. And we can use yet, have you tried the sweater yet? In a question. And I haven't tried the sweater yet. So when can we use each one of them? We can use already in an affirmative statement or sentence and in a question as well. Just can only be used in affirmative sentences and yet can be used with both the affirmative and the negative sentences as well as in questions. However, yet comes at the end of the sentence and the question, however, in here already will come in the middle of the sentence. Okay, so these they are. Let's try to do this exercise. Read the conversation and complete the gaps with already, yet, or just. We're having Sylvia and Karen. So Karen, has your nephew left? Notice that this one is a question, so I have two options, whether yet or already. However, it comes at the end of the uh, question, so I will use yet. Has your nephew left yet? Yes, Greg has gone. 
already gone. At long last. How long did he stay? At the beginning here, I will say just three months. He was doing a research project here at the university. When he arrived, I said, make yourself at home, and he did just that. So just notice, is it affirmative or negative, question or a sentence, at the beginning, at, in the middle, or at the end of the sentence, and you will be able to choose the correct expression. On page 16 as well, we've spoken about the construction of a gerund as well as a full infinitive. Speaking about a gerund, what do we mean when we say gerund? A gerund is a verb plus the ing, the ing. So it's the ing form of the verb. However, it functions as a noun. When we're having any one of these verbs, give up, stop, imagine, mind, hate, we're having avoid, enjoy, can't stand, keep, miss, suggest, or finish, any one of these verbs, they will be followed by a gerund. They will function as a verb, and what comes after will be a gerund, so it will be a noun. We can say, I gave up trying, give up, gave up trying. Notice the trying. Then, he stopped talking, and I can't imagine wearing this. What comes after this list of verbs will be the gerund. Next, speaking about the infinitive, what do we mean with the infinitive? When I say infinitive, it means to plus the verb, to do. When do we use the to do or the full infinitive form of the verb? If we're having need, want, or like. We will have need to do, want to do, and like to do. So I can say, we need to talk, I want to see you, and I'd like to help. Whenever we have each, any one of these verbs, they will be followed by the full infinitive form of the verb. Let's try to do this one. She, clean, can't stand, and the house. Now you will come up with the correct sentence using whether a gerund or an infinitive. We will say, she can't stand cleaning the house. Because we're having can't stand, it will be followed by the gerund, which is cleaning. Live, grandparents, enjoy, and in the country. So, my, our grandparents enjoy living in the country. After enjoy, we will use the ing form of the verb. Like laptop, he, to share, and doesn't, and doesn't, and his. We will say, he doesn't like to share his laptop. So, after like, we will use the full infinitive. Just try to remember the list of the verbs and whether they will be followed by a gerund, the ing form of the verb, or if they, they will be followed by the full infinitive to plus the verb. On page 17, we've spoken about the subject and the object pronouns. Just like in here, when we said Sammy helped his grandmother. We're having here any English sentence consists of subject, followed by a verb, helped, and followed by the object. And any noun can be replaced by a pronoun. If it is the subject, like here we're having Sammy, it could be replaced by he, she, it, they, you, we, or I. Sammy, male, so I can replace it with he. So we can say Sammy or he. How about if it were the object? Can we replace it with it just like the subject pronouns? No. If it were the, the object, you can replace it with him, her, it, them, you, us, or me. So grandmother will be replaced by her. So you can use the noun, or as a replacement, you can use the pronoun. Just check, is it a subject, or it is the object, and you can choose the correct one. Now let's check this exercise. You will use the correct object pronoun. He doesn't like the shoes. He is going to return. We're speaking about the shoes. So we will say them. Return the shoes or return them. Sandra is never on time. I'm going to tell, to tell Sandra, to tell her to be more punctual. Instead of Sandra, which is the object, I will use her. 
This computer crashed. I am going to return the computer, which is it, and get a refund. Excuse me, we can't find what we are looking for. Could you help with having we in here? The object pronoun, which is us. Can you help us? The car windscreen is cracked. Please, can you fix, which is the windscreen, the car windscreen, which is it. So it will be, can you fix it for us? So using the object pronoun, just remember which one we replace with. On page 17 as well, we've spoken about using imperatives and two word verbs. What are two word verbs? They are the phrasal verbs. A verb like put off, get, get along, throw away, and we're having put on. Each two, or let's say each phrasal verb consists of two parts. The first one, which we call it the verb, which is just like put, get, throw, or put as well. And the second part, which is, we call it the particle. What is a particle? It is one of two. Whether it is a preposition, like here, we're having off or on, or it is an adverb, like along or with. These are adverbs. So it is one of two. If we're having turn off, we, when, we are, when you are turning off, you're not using the TV. So the sentence can be, turn off the TV. Here is this is the verb, which is turn off, and this one is the noun, which is the TV. Turn off the TV. We can write it in, a, in another way. So I can say, turn the TV off. Turn the TV off. What we've done in here, I will add the noun in the middle between the, the, the verb and the particle to turn the TV off. And back to the idea of the pronoun, we can change the TV with the suitable pronoun, which is it. So turn it off. So you're having three ways to write down an imperative using a two-word verb, whether you will put the phrasal verb followed by the noun or the noun in the middle here just like the tv off you will write it here in the middle between the two which is the particle and the noun and you can change it with an object pronoun turn it off how about this one here i will say clean up your hands this is the verb and here is the noun we can change the order and i can say clean your hands up. I will say clean your hands up. What I have done, I have separated the verb and the particle with the noun. Turn, uh, we're having here clean your hands up. And we can change the noun with an object pronoun. So I will say clean them up. Clean them up, which are the hands. So instead of the hands, I have used them. Okay. In your books, page 68, there are, a there are a list of words. There is a list of words, many words that, you, that we have already mentioned in this unit. Choose three to five of these words and choose them as being your favorite word. Which one of them uh, do you like the most? Is it the word stained, dry clean, loose, screen, faucet? Then try to get the meaning of that word and rewrite it in a complete and a correctly uh, a sentence in a correctly formed sentence then if you still have any questions just go read through the unit one more time read again in unit one you can also listen to the audio material listen to them you will get more information you will study the grammar the function uh, from the unit again the second lesson as well as the previous lesson the form meaning and function and if you still have any questions just ask your teachers. Your teachers are always there to answer your question. Okay? I guess that is it for the lesson today. And thank you so much for your time.